Good afternoon. Uh, so today we're just going to have a brief uh, overview of putting together a small R&D sputtering tool with as many off-the-shelf components as, as we can. Constantly getting inquiries for people trying to keep uh, budgets down, put together a small R&D-based uh, sputtering tool for, uh, for a multitude of different processes. So the design goals are going to be to, uh, to try to keep the cost reasonable, of course, and uh, use as many off-the-shelf parts as possible. Uh, we'll analyze the cost of labor versus purchasing a, a system and compare some of the pros and cons to commercial systems. So the scope of the system in, in this study, we, we used a two-inch sputtering source, magnetron sputtering source, uh, two-inch diameter sample, uh, goal of under five percent uniformity uh, in a high vacuum system, like um, a base in the, in the seven scale uh, gas system, and stick with dry vacuum. So the key components to put together a, a small system, uh, obviously the sputtering source. Some sort of chamber, some uh, vacuum gauging, uh, gas introduction, mass flow control, or some form of bringing gas into the chamber, uh, dry pumping, uh, sample holder, and also power supplies and controls. So, in this case, we used a, uh, a cross, a two inch source, so a two inch cathode that uh, doesn't require a lot of cooling, electrical connections, and it, this is a magnetic heaver type source, so it's, it's quite easy to change the materials uh, from one to, one to another. The chamber, in this case, is an off-the-shelf cross. You can use either a five or a six-way cross. Uh, we use a six-way cross, uh, eight-inch OD complex style flanges. Um, there's a multiple reducing flanges, lengths, and uh, hardware, gaskets, viewport, access uh, that, you, that you need to make sure you incorporate if you don't put it in the, the chamber. Uh, in this case, we use a turbo pump with a small cross size, somewhere around 300 liters per second. It is, it's pretty well balanced for this size system. Anywhere from about 220 liters up to 450 to 500 liters per second for fine for this type of experiment. The appropriate scroll pump to back that and buy the 10 CFMs is more than adequate. Uh, isolation valve, which allows you to, to close off your pumping and, and access your part much quicker, can also be used for throttling if you want to limit the amount of gas introduction. Uh, some form of uh, fit valve, so that you can come back up to air, and then all the plumbing of the individual components together. In this case, we're using an off-the-shelf, uh, commercially available sample holder. There's Number of small discs on the market that just have a multitude of tap holes, some small clips and screws that allow you to fix just basic uh, small small samples. You can also use adhesives, uh, capped on tape, a number of other mechanisms to, to attach samples or gravity since the sample holder in this case is on the bottom of the tool. As far as gauging, um, you need some type of vacuum gauge to watch the rough vacuum down to your base pressure. There's a multitude of gauges that you can use, thermal couples, vector uh, combo gauges in the end for the process end. Uh, Capacitance and envelope is really the gauge of choice. Um, and that's what is possible for this, this evaluation. Uh, you need a power supply, your RF or DC, and what types of materials you want to deposit. And then a sample rotation is, is optional on small samples, but it will allow you to even out the uniformity and, and give you a little more. Uh, Flexibility, it can be out of tight uniformity requirement. Um, turbo pump controller with displays is in kind of optional. You can get away with just a, a power supply, but what the controllers really afford you is you can uh, have more monitoring and, and understanding how the pump's operating, but you can also, in many cases, slow the, slow the rotational speed down the pump and change the pumping speed um, to keep a more constant uh, pressure and gas flow in the system. It's quite handy to have. For the basic specifications, in this case, was a uh, base pressure mid seven scale without any kind of bake. Uh, less than 45 minutes would be well within the six range, about mid sixes. Uh, two inch source, two inch sample holder, uh, up to a three inch sample holder can be played with, um, vacuum monitoring, 
from that scope down to eight scale, just to make sure that we can monitor the range that the pump state will provide. And then another the source of substrate distance. In this case, the hardware that's spec out has a slip collar with a sputtering source. So that source of substrate distance is readily adjustable. So you can go typically that type of a source anywhere from two to four inches based on your, your actual photo requirement. Um, and then an access port to get in, change catheters, uh, change samples. And all the ports for pumping, all the ports for gauging, all included on the on the cross. So um, in this case, the uniformity was about 6% on two inch samples at a two inch distance. When we backed that up to three inch, we get down to less than 3%. And for the larger three inch samples, uh, we're right around 10%, just a tick under 10%. Now, if we angle that head about 15 degrees and do end rotation, we can, we can pretty quickly get under 2% in all of these, in all of these case studies. Um, so the rates that we were able to achieve on a two inch, a two inch copper, Target is 6,200 angstroms in a minute. It's at 500 watts at 5 millifold with an RF background. And at 3 inches, that drops off to about 2,800 angstroms in a minute. Aluminum, substantially lower, uh, about 75%. So it was about 4,500 angstroms a minute at 2 inches and about just to take over 2,000 at 3 inches. Um, again, 500 watts. That's pretty much the maximum rates that you would drive those small sources at. We want to do oxides, of course we have to run the RF, uh, and there you've got to start at significantly low power, you can't overpower those, uh, those targets, it really depends on the thermal, uh, the ability of thermal to transfer to the cold system without cracking the target. So generally 10 to 20, 30 percent of, of the metallic power of what you're going to be using on those materials. So in this case, when we look through the entire buildup of hardware, we were just under $15,000 in components, hardware, gaskets, uh, service gaskets, uh, load lock lower for an entire package. The controls between the uh, gauging and the um, DC power supply in this particular case was just around $10,000 with the pumping system around $15,000. So it's pretty across the board from almost any commercial supplier at price point. Negotiating with around a little bit, it's possible to be closer to thirty thousand dollars, but that, that's really the bottom limit of putting together a high vacuum sputtering pool at this height. Um, Forty is more reasonable number, especially if you want to have dramatic valves or any additional options. It could take anywhere from a couple of days up to a couple of weeks to put something like this together. Um, it's really nice to have some type of support for it. There are some standard off-the-shelf aluminum extrusion frames that are pretty readily available. And they'll typically work with you to uh, help mount to something, or you can pick up off any of the plumbing bolts and, and make a small bracket to something that you can then staple on a, a countertop. Um, the benefits of going this route and using off the shelf components is the lower cost. It's a great learning experience if you're just setting up a small RD lab or working with the students. Um, you gain some assembly knowledge, uh, you have a lot more control over the particular items and parameters that you're going with. It might be something local to you that's, that's more of a resource are supported, so you have a little more control over the individual components. Um, you're a direct customer of all the components, so it's easy to identify and locate and, and source service parts. The drawbacks are uh, in words I need to hear some assembly required if you have to put the thing together. There's always some minor wiring and integration, um, interlocks, uh, safety controls, these types of things, uh, the manuals. Obviously, have most of that information, and most of the vendors are quite good at supporting you. But you are working with multiple suppliers and, and products, so a little bit of a learning curve there in most cases. Uh, less support, you get individual support, but you don't get the entire integrated support of an off the shelf tool. Um, so, in this case, buying uh, components to put something together, you can come in at under 40k pretty, pretty easily on a two inch buttering system. Uh, one, Three weeks of labor typically, uh, depending on skill set. There is a limited add on ability. We do have some extra ports, you can play with some other options like rotation and such, but it's a little bit limited because it's pretty much designed just to do basic sputtering. Uh, you've got to develop your own instructions based on the individual instructions and components you use, and uh, some, some cable and lock provisions that you'll have to do. Uh, commercial systems of this type typically start around 60k and can go up, up to 
significantly from there. But what you are getting there is, is really a turnkey item that can show up and it's ready to go based on your process parameters. Uh, typically, their lead times are a little bit longer than doing something along like the shelf parts. And it would have more to do with instruction manuals, warranty, service, technical support, those types of options. So, a little bit of a trade off in that. Um, so in this case, we did run some metals, put together some general rate data for metals, um, some uniformity on the aluminum and the copper, in this case of three inches, which is pretty appropriate for this scalp uh, product, which in that 3% range is reasonable for a lot of experiments. Um, and we have created a complete list of the hardware that we used to put into this arrangement. Um, so you see the build up quantities, these types of things, what it takes to Chases that product down to do it yourself. So that's essentially what it would take to put together to get up a small two inch button source and, uh, and be able to do metals if you wanted to go with the RF supply. It's probably another four or five.